If you want to get an experiment that you've created with PsychoPy running online, there's a couple different ways you could go about doing it. Uh, the first way is if you build your experiment in run mode, so switch it over to run mode, and then under browser, if you click this middle play button, what it's going to do is attempt to uh, upload your experiment to pavlavia.org, which is a web server provider. Uh, it's by the creators of PsychoPy. It allows you to host your experiments there and collect your data there. Uh, and that's a really simple option to go. If you just want to get up and running very quickly with your experiment online, check out Pavlavia, support the creators of PsychoPy, definitely recommend it. But if cost is an issue, because you do have to pay per participant when running your experiments there, uh, an alternative is to self-host your experiment, to set up your own web server, collect your data there. Uh, you can bypass that per participant cost and have full control over your data, which could be especially useful, especially if your institution maybe has restrictions on running experiments on third-party software. The uh, self-hosting solution I'm going to show is going to be the way to go. Now, this is going to require some basic web development experience. Uh, specifically, we're going to need to do a little bit of server-side coding to actually take the results of our experiment and save it to a server. I'm going to be showing example code for that in PHP. It's a very common server-side programming language, but you could adapt this for other server types, Node.js, Python, whatever you want to work with. Um, the JavaScript code I'm going to show you to actually send the experiment results, that's going to be the same regardless of your server endpoint. So long story short, our goal is to get an experiment up and running on our own web server, collect our data there. Uh, and the first step to do this is within your experiment self, you're going to need some sort of end or exit routine where we're going to make the save process happen. So I've got a simple ex uh, experiment already set up. This is just a basic lexical decision task experiment. And I've created an exit routine, which right now just has a text component on it. And the contents of that text component, it says, please wait while we save your results. And of course, you can adjust the language here, but you just want some message letting the user know that they need to wait a moment because what's going to happen behind the scenes is we're going to be sending the results of our experiment to our server to be saved. And sometimes that could take a few moments. So we don't want the user to click off or close the web page or anything like that. All right, now after that, we're going to add another component. We're going to add a custom code component. And the code type we're going to be adding here is JavaScript. So let's switch it to JavaScript. And I want this to execute at the beginning of my exit routine. And for the code, I'm going to go over to the notes that accompany this video. I've got the JavaScript all written out. So we're just going to copy it from there. And then we're going to paste it in. And then scrolling to the top, let's briefly run through what this code is doing. And the first thing to observe is throughout the code, we're referencing this psycho.js instance. So when we have psychopy convert our experiment to web-friendly code, it's going to be using psycho.js. That's psycho JavaScript. It's the basically JavaScript equivalent of psycho Python. Um, and as part of that conversion, there's this psycho.js instance that's created that really holds all the details of our experiment. So the first reference to that is on this first line. There's a property within that instance called save results that we're going to turn it to false or zero. And this is going to make it so that when the participant reaches the end of the experiment, it's not going to try to download the results of the experiment, which is the default behavior when you're piloting an experiment. And obviously, we don't want that to happen when we're running this with real world participants. We don't want them to have to download their results. So we're going to turn that off. And instead, we're going to take the results and send it to our own server. Uh, now, moving on, the rest of the code handles that process of sending it to the server. So we generate a file name for the results that are going to be uh, extracted. And that's just going to be a combination of the name of the experiment itself and the current date and time from which the uh, experiment is completed. Uh, the object uh, data object is going to hold all of our trial data. So this is like the core data of our experiment. We're going to extract that out of the PsychoJS instance. And we're going to get that back as a JavaScript object. So we've got some code here that's going to then convert that to CSV. So comma separated values. That's going to give us a nice plain text format we can save our results as. All right, so basically get the data, do some conversion on it. And then following that, we've got a basic uh, JavaScript fetch method. This is what's going to actually make a request to our server endpoint and send along that data. Now, the endpoint I've specified here is a file called save.php, which I'm going to be creating on my web server. I have some code I'll share for that. But you could swap this out with whatever server endpoint you have. You just need some server endpoint that is programmed to receive a post request with the data and write it to the server. 
All right, you can see as part of this request in the body, we're sending over the name of the file for our results as well as the data which we grabbed and converted up above. All right, and that's very uh, straightforward JavaScript. It's a basic AJAX or fetch request that's going to happen behind the scenes. Send that data over, and then, like I said, we just have to program the endpoint for it. Uh, so let's go ahead and click OK on this. We've got our thank you text. We've got our code component. And now we just need PsychoPy to translate this to the web code that we need. And the way we're going to do that is let's switch over to pilot mode. We don't want to be in run mode because then it's going to try to send it to Pavlovia. We don't want that. So we're going to go to pilot. And then under browser, we're going to click this middle play button. And you can see that brought up my web browser where my experiment's now running. And then most importantly, if I look at the underlying files for this experiment, so I'm just going to go to my finder window. This project is currently on my desktop under a folder called LDT. Uh, we could see the main PsychoPy experiment file for it here, but then all these other files were generated when I ran it in the browser. So I've got my index.html file. This is what is actually loading when we're looking at it in the browser. And that's going to be pulling in things like my JavaScript file. So this is going to be named after your experiment file name. In my case, it's ldt.js. That has the underlying uh, psycho.js code needed for this experiment that was generated by PsychoPy. We also have a lib folder that has the underlying psycho.js library itself. Basically, all the ingredients we need to run this on the web, it was generated for us. So to run this on our server, what we want to do is we want to take these files and put it on the server. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to switch over to my code editor where I'm currently remotely connected to my web server. I'm SSH'd into it. Um, and I've got it set up. I've already got an LDT directory there. And I set up my server and my domain provider so I can actually access any of the web files I put in here via a subdomain. Uh, it's going to be ldt.codewithsusan.com. So that's all pre-configured. And that's the part I did mention. You do need some prior web experience. If you need any assistance on guidance on that, you can comment below or send me an email and uh, available for consulting. But uh, moving forward, like I said, we just want to get our files that were generated up into our web server. So in this case, I'm just going to drag and drop them over. So let's start with that index.html file. Drag that into my LDT folder. I'm going to bring over both JavaScript files. There's the main JavaScript file, and then there's like a backwards compatible file for older browsers. We're going to bring both of them in. And then we're going to bring in that lib folder. And in my case, I do have an external conditions file, so I'm going to bring that in as well. And with that, I should be good to go for all the front end uh, files related to my experiment. So now I just need to create that server endpoint to process the results. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, I'm doing that via a file called save.php. So I'm just going to create that. And then for the code for this, again, I'm going to go back to the notes that accompany this video. There's some example server side code we can use. And skimming through the key parts of this, it is programmed to listen for an incoming post request. It will extract the data from that request, decode it, and then it'll write it uh, to our file system on this server. Now it's going to write it to a directory called data, so I want to make sure I create that directory. So down in command line, let me move into my LDT folder. I'll make a new data directory, and then I need to make sure this directory is writable by my web server so it can actually save the files there. So I'm going to use the change own command. And the user that my web server runs under is called wwdata. So I'm going to make that the owner and also the group. And then I'll follow that with the name of the directory. And that should set us up with the correct permissions. Um, and just FYI on those commands, at the very end of the notes, I do have some guidance on that. If you're not sure which user your web server is running as, I have a command that can tell you what that user is. So you could adapt this uh, command as needed. So with that final step completed, we should have everything set up to test this out. So in the browser, as I mentioned, I already set up a subdomain to point to this particular project. So I'm just going to go to that subdomain. And excellent, there's our welcome screen. I'll enter a participant number. Click OK. Here's the instructions for my experiment. I'll press the spacebar to begin. And then I'm going to see my conditions or my stimuli. And I'm just going to press the appropriate key to proceed through each of those. There's our please wait message. So it should be saving the results behind the scenes. And there we go. There's our final exit message of the experiment. So we'll click OK. And then the real test is let's go back to our server and see if the results were saved there. So I'm going to check in my data directory. And excellent. There's my CSV file prefixed with the name of the experiment, the date in which it was completed. And if we open it up, there is all of our nice CSV data with our results. So hopefully this is a useful starting point for anybody looking to self-host PsychoPy experiments. 
Uh, and as a follow-up to this, I'll also have another guide that shows a similar process, but rather than using your own web server, you can run your experiments on GitHub Pages, which is a free static site hosting platform. And then you can pipe your data to osf.io for free as well. So if you're really on a budget and you want to go for a completely free option, check out that video. I'll include a link on the screen.